Hello, my darlings. Welcome to this session, this message. I decided to talk about the most dangerous thought process that can occur at the human level. And maybe not only at the human level, but we're incarnate as humans here. The most dangerous thought process that can occur is the identification process. And what do I mean by this is that this is probably the most creative thought process that it, it creates an identity. And what is an identity? It's a reality, a reality of the self. You create a reality for yourself. And the more you repeat that, the more you believe that, the more you believe that, the more you make it happen. Basically, manifestation. Now, some people don't use this power at all. Some people have given up this power entirely. They identify with their names, with their age, and even worse, with their job. I suppose you've heard many people telling you that they are a doctor, that they are a physician, that they are a, an engineer, that they are a taxi driver, that they are a, an accountant, that they are a... etc. That's not what you are. That's a job. A, a job that is something which talks about the kind of service you give to the society, to the community you're part of. That's all that that is. Nothing else. It's not what you are. It's not your life. Unless you have no life. Unless you're a workaholic or stuff like that. But that's not life. That's not who you are. And I know that most people in the spiritual communities already know this. But there is something about the identification process that even people in the spiritual community still fall for it. And this is the most damaging Thing about this identification process. It is the thing of identifying with the incarnation. There is this phrasing, your soul. If you allow yourself to truly feel what that does for you, it breaks you, it ruptures you from who you are because you are a soul. All of you are souls. Everyone is a soul. In the eyes of divinity, in the eyes of the one primordial creator, you have no names. You are not, insert name here, the name you have in this lifetime. You are a soul. A soul with a certain trajectory of evolution, each one having their own trajectory indeed. But a soul. Everyone is a soul. And that's it. This is how you are in my eyes. And I advise you, please, start understanding this. As I talked about in previous sessions, the human language has been turned in such manners that humans use it to their detriment without even knowing it. I suppose there are some of you who've heard that, you know that saying, you're not a body having a soul, you're a soul having a body. And Many people use that saying, but they don't fully understand it because they still use the other saying of your soul. 
think of it. What does that do? It implies that the soul is something you have, you possess. What kind of souls want to possess souls? Remind yourselves this. What kind of souls enjoy the idea of possessing other souls? It is those souls who enjoy this idea that manipulated humans, the souls who come incarnate as humans, into phrasing things in such a manner that they renounce their own selves, the souls who they are, and they start identifying with incarnations. They stop being who they are, souls, and they started becoming just humans. And indeed, I tell you, I look around every day and I see so many people. They are only humans. They are not souls. And they don't even have souls. They are depleted of everything they are. And this is the thing. You're not depleted of your soul. When you're depleted of those soulful things, you're depleted of yourself. Because the identity, the true identity is that of who you are, a soul. And every soul starts by being nothing. This is true power. And understanding that your true identity is that of being nothing, absolute nothing. And only then do you start traveling through existence and going through journeys of becoming this or this or this or this. And understanding nuances of abundance, love, joy, happiness. Yes, these are identities as well. I am abundance, I am joy, I am happiness, I am fulfillment. These are identities. Again, you don't have joy. You don't have love. You become joy, you become love, you are joy, you are love. And these are things that fill you up. Why is it that they fill you up? Because you're nothing, essentially. You're nothing. The true power of a soul is that of being nothing. Not of having nothing, of being nothing. It is time that those who are on the journey of ascension, you understand that the question of having is invalid. It's not having, it's being. Having implies possession. It goes outside of the self. Being implies the self. Being involves the self. Being is about the self. I am me. Who am I? I am nothing. Who is God? Who is the prime creator? The absolute, eternal, supreme nothingness. This is true power. The true power of the one being. Commune with me. Commune with me. Let us become one because we are one. This is what I wanted to talk about. Please stop phrasing things in such manners that you disrupt yourself from yourself. Your identity is not an incarnation. An incarnation is just an incarnation in a vast number of many other incarnations. Many of you, you can't even count to the number of incarnations you've had or you will have. You can't, your human mind can't even count to that extent. If you can't, if the human mind can't even count to the extent of the number of incarnations, think of the extent of experiences you have all throughout those incarnations. And beside this, there are also many experiences to be felt, felt, not had, felt and integrated in the non-physical, outside of the realm of incarnations. 
So again, I encourage you to stop dissociating yourself from yourself. Stop rupturing yourself from yourself. What happens when you say your soul is that you are here, you the soul, and instead of you, your presence as of the as of the current incarnation being here, integrated in who you are, it goes here. And when I give you this visual of the incarnate, this being the soul and here a dot, let's imagine, being part of the circle who is the soul, don't view it as an incarnation being less or lesser than your full extent. It's a whole philosophy involved here. A dot is like the circle. Every dot within the circle is the circle, nonetheless. But that's the thing. Understanding that you are the circle, not just a dot. And when you are the circle, you regain your power. This is a major thing. This is how they manipulate. This is how they possess you. Because without realizing it, many people are throwing away their power. And as I said, even without, re without realizing it, without realizing, some still think that some think that they have re taken back their power, but they are still throwing parts of it away. I hope this has helped you. And I thank you for being on this journey. And I rejoice at every, every word of happiness, of joy of love I receive from you. I love you tremendously. Go shine, come shine.